Hello, snackers. How can APIs and automation make your life easier? In episode 38 of DevNet Snack Minute, we join Matt and Kareem as they chat with Adrian, software engineering technical leader, as he explains how to manage your ACI infrastructure using Smartsheet. Yes, I said Smartsheet. Hey, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Hi, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 38 of DevNet Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, or just some cool stuff that we think you might want to know. And the cool thing we're talking about today is managing your ACI instance within a smart sheet with our guest, Adrian Ilyasu. Adrian, do you mind introducing yourself, please? Sure. Thanks, Kareem. Uh, hello, everybody. So very happy to be here. My name is Adrian Liesiu. I'm a tech lead with the DevNet Innovations team. And uh, yes, on this edition of Stack Minute, I wanted to share with you guys how to manage your ACI infrastructure using Smartsheets. Adrian, tell us tell us a little bit about why you came to that to that use case and why why did you build it that way? What was the reason for this use case? Yes, I mean, we always want to show third-party integrations with Cisco platforms, right? So ACI having a, a rich set of APIs, we wanted to, to see how we can showcase and um, bring some third-party integrations into the platform. So Smartsheet would be one of them. There's also, you know, ServiceNow for ticketing. There's really anything that has an API can interact with ACI. And in this case, we wanted to show a simple way of how you can manage in a, in a more straightforward fashion. If, for example, you find the API GUI too convoluted or there's too many steps or just for automation purposes or to speed up configuration because you can have everything um, already pre-populated in your Smartsheet, all the configuration objects, all the tenants, all the bridge domain VRFs. And we'll see in the demo section of this, you can have them all pre-populated for you in this nice Smartsheet Excel type of format. And you can just, from a dropdown, select whatever objects you want to configure, fill in um, the required parameters, whatever that might be. We'll see in the demo, like an IP address with the subnet mask. And once you save the Smartsheet, magic happens in the background. <laughs> uh, Python script gets triggered. Python script gets triggered, webhooks get fired, and um, Ansible playbooks and Rebel files get built, and they get run, and then your configuration gets applied into the ACI fabric. So it's pretty cool use case. Uh, we've used this actually with some of our customers. They were big fans of Action Orchestrator. Um, and you know, with Action Orchestrator getting moved into SecureX, they wanted to also migrate their uh, actual orchestrated scripts to full-blown Python. So this is what we've done here. All right, show us the magic. Yeah, were you guys ready? Yeah, man. Yeah. So, this is great. Uh, you know, it's it's you talked about kind of abstracting some of the complication of things and really tying it to what they care about. And and that's, that's always a, a big message when we talk about programmability and automation. So I'm really excited to see kind of under the hood, see all the magic that you just talked about. Sweet. So this is how it looks. We have a, you know, a pretty simple front end here with the burger menu on the left hand side. You see here what options are available and basically everything starts from the ACI provisioning start point. So this is a, a smart sheet form, right? And in this case, I have two sites here. I have two AP controllers that are running in, in the DMZ that I'm connected to. So you could have here, of course, multiple Epic instances, whatever you want, you just add them in here. Um, and also I, I made it very easy in the code to just add as many additional instances as you need. So once you select one of them, you have a new drop down uh, menu popping up here. So from here, you can select the tenant that you want the configuration to be applied uh, on. So in this case, um, I see here on this Epic instance, I have your infra management and, com and common. These are built-in pretty much tenants. And then I have the three extra ones that I created. 
select test uh, one. And then for the use cases here, I have covered eight use cases, eight typical common configuration use cases for ACI. So we have how to deploy an application, creating static pad binding, configuring filters, contracts, associating endpoint groups to contracts, how to configure policy groups, configure switch and interface profiles, and associate interfaces to policy groups. So this is your, your typical day-to-day -day management activities that uh, an ACI administrator would do. So you select, for example, want to deploy a new app, right? In this APIC instance within this tenant, I do a submit. So what happens here, a webhook, of course, gets triggered right in the background. And we should be able to see it in my code right here. I have my application running. So there's some cell that has been changed, right? There's magic happening here. That trigger, that webhook, I'm intercepting the APIC, I'm intercepting the tenant. And based on that, I'm pre-populating all the drop-down fields over here right in the deploy and app sheet. So starting point, then I go to deploy an app, right? Because that's what I want to do. And this is just a regular smart sheet. Here I see that already pre-populated is the site. So APIC one, the one that I selected and the tenant. And based on this information, I pre-populated also all the other drop downs in here with all the objects that are available for that tenant and that APIC instance. So let's say we want to go ahead and create a new bridge domain, a new subnet, right? So I have here 33, I say I want to add 34 also. And once I make sure that it's ready to deploy, this checkbox is checked, right? So you can make changes as as many as you want, but once you check this, that is ready to deploy and you save the smart sheet, that also triggers, of course, another web hook. And just to show you guys, it should pop up in here. I'm still logged in. So what happens in the background is, right, there you go, 34.1, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> super cool, man. <laughs> so what happened in the background actually, right, is that a new playbook and a new variable file has been created and Ansible has been run with all these new variables that I've input, right? So I have here, this is the variable files. You see here the IP address, the subnet mask, and you also see the playbook with 007. So you can keep track of um, all the changes you perform, right? Every time you configure a new change, there's basically uh, a new playbook and a new variable files that are being uh, created and run. The cool thing is that you also get a status, right? So I see here a green background on this cell. It means everything went well, right? So Ansible uh, playbook ran fine. We've seen the, the new subnet created, but let's say, right? make a mistake with fat finger something. And instead of a mask that, you know, it's a valid one, let's put an invalid mask. Let's make it here 35. So it's, it's a wrong parameter, right? Mm -hmm. Saving this, same thing goes in the background right here, right? So 3548, you change that. Ansible script runs, and of course it will fail because 48 is not a valid subnet mask. Right. So, once that happens, I get a notification here with the red background. Hey, there was a problem, right, with your script. So you get a visual notification also that, hey, your, your playbook didn't run correctly. Go ahead, investigate and see what happens and, and what went wrong. So you get a nice visual notification at the same time. Quick question for you. So if we're looking at this and, you know, some other person goes in and changes configuration on in ACI itself, as opposed to the smart sheet, how would it sync back with it? Or how would smart sheet know of the new changes of the configuration? So that's a great question, Kareem. Um, there's no web hooks, as you guys know, currently in APIC, right? So what I have done is I have this prompt job 
and this is the suggested way. If you go ahead and check the automation exchange right for this, you'll see there are all the steps, what you need to do. But basically, this get tenants, you would have a cron job, for example, you know, every so often you want to run it, just sync everything, get all the tenants from all your instances and sync all the objects in case somebody made a change exactly like you said, you know, within the GUI. So that's kind of the way of keeping in sync the smart sheets with somebody making changes on the side with, with the GUI. You just run an, kind of like an updating job, right? With, uh, with this script that just every once in a while checks all the objects, all the tenants and update the smart sheets at the same time. Yeah, that's very cool, Adrian. Um, and the nice thing is you're kind of documenting your entire uh, organization and your tenants while you're doing it. And so right. that's, that's awesome. Um, you know, we talk about infrastructure as code and this is, this is uh, you know, infrastructure as spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> One cool thing that I want to show you guys, I don't know if you guys still have time. So this is all nice and sweet, but the big advantage with this would be when you start doing like multiple changes at the same time, because you take advantage of the parallelism that comes with Ansible. So you can have like three, four, five, six, right? And they run 10 changes, whatever you have at the same time. And I have here one, and let's say I want to change the VLANs on these interfaces. Right, I'm saving this. Same thing, create static path. You'll see here popping up the three playbooks and variable files, mm -hmm. right? And they will be run and you can check the variable files, right? With VLANs, with the leaf range and then the interface. Everything goes in the background, runs the Ansible playbooks. And really the parallelism that comes with this, right? That's really something that the APIC, the GUI doesn't really have it. So while this is nice deploying an application, right? Because you have everything drop down menus and everything, um, the, the, the option of making massive changes at the same time is, is where it's at. And I know if we have time to go over the code and talk about the, the libraries that I've used, but uh, if not, we'll leave it for another time. Yeah, unfortunately, Adrian, we're at time, but people can check out this uh, particular use case and all the code in Automation Exchange, right? They do, yes. It's, it's there, all documented. I have here the GitHub, um, right, with all the steps explain what you need to do to get it started in your own environment. It's all in, in GitHub in uh, any automation exchange. So you guys let me know if you like it, if you have any comments. Um, more than happy to, to help you get this started. I think the cool thing about this too is if you have a use case that's outside of ACI, uh, part of the, the automation exchange submission is how to integrate Smartsheet and that webhook and, and getting that piece working, whether you choose to use ACI, DNA Center, or whatever it is to integrate with, um, you, can, you can just do that, take that piece. So um, thanks, Adrian. This is, this is pretty awesome. You love DNA Center. Um, Adrian, <laughs> uh, we ask all of our guests uh, before we finish, with the episode, what their superpower would be and why? Uh, would you mind taking on that question? Oh, wow. Superpower. <laughs> I'd like to see the future, right? To be able to see the future so that I can oh. uh, see, see the stock prices for tomorrow, for example, <laughs> or to make my investment uh, more profitable. <laughs> I think the older I get, the less I want to see the future. But that's an interesting one, man. We could talk about the ethical concern, ethical and, and existential concerns about that at some other <laughs> point. Uh, but Snackers, thank you so much for your time today. Adrian, this is very cool. Check out Adrian's project. Um, it's got a lot of really neat stuff behind the scenes on it. Um, ties a lot of the technologies together that we have that we always talk about here at DevNet Snack Minute. So um, check that out and uh, come back next week for our next episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Thanks, Snackers. Thanks, Adrian.